Hi everybody, this is Greg Tanner for The Mindful Eye and The Daily Critique. Today's image was submitted by John, who's an advanced photographer. John was not on our Death Valley National Park workshop, so this is just a coincidental submission. John did take this picture in Death Valley National Park, and I believe this is Dante's view, which is one of the big dramatic desert overlooks in the park. John shot this with a Canon 20D, effective focal length of 130 millimeters, and at ISO 100 stopped down to f11 and exposed the file for 1 400th of a second. One of the things I really like a lot about this image, and it's sort of one of the takeaways from today's critique, is this way of seeing the big landscape. So much of the time we're sort of looking at an either-or scenario. The photographer is either put on a wide lens and is working with sort of foreground and middle ground and background. Uh, and using the wide lens, the perspective distortion of the wide lens, a lot of times may be leading line to suggest this space from near to far. or the photographer puts on a longer lens and goes out and slices out a section that's more two-dimensional, uh, that's far away. And John is doing something here that's really beautiful. Um, you see this uh, idea quite a bit in cinema where John is using a longer focal length, the telephoto focal length, and using layers of information and using selective focus to suggest the idea of near to far and uh, really beautiful. And it's just a, a way of seeing to think about. It's, it's difficult to do this. Um, you know, one of the fun things about standing in a space like this, this overlook, um, is the long lens can become pretty easy to use just in terms of going out and maybe abstracting a pattern on the desert floor or maybe you just shoot a long shot that's more two-dimensional where you get part of the mountain and a cloud or some light on the mountains back in here or just a pattern study. Um, this is harder to do because now we're starting to work with multiple layers of information and trying to work with those in a way to uh, to say something, make a point, can be difficult to get separation. And John's done a really beautiful job here with a, with a pretty long uh, telephoto lens of really suggesting something that's very close to the camera, that's palpable, and out to the middle ground and then the background of the mountains in the sky. Another thing I really love about this image right away when I looked at it is however John has achieved this, whether it was in camera or some combination of in camera and, and digital editing, um, this image, because of color and quality of light, it has to me an otherworldly feeling to it, and that's a feeling that I get when I'm in Death Valley. It's a landscape that to me is already otherworldly, so I like seeing it sort of pushed in this direction. And a lot of what's happening for me in terms of that feeling has to do with the way colors are being represented here, so I'm enjoying that. And I just like the simplicity of this image. To me, this is sort of the main character in the story, the main subject. I would like the way John, like I've already mentioned, worked with uh, selective focus to get the main subject here to separate against the pretty simple pattern of the mountains in the background. Color is also helping to do this, the difference between warm and cool. Um, there's a great simplicity in terms of the other shapes in the image. These two shapes play off of each other in a dynamic, sort of symmetrical kind of way. These two triangles pushing against each other. And and then really uh, what's left is sort of the sky to come in and play off of uh, the base of the image. So a simple image. I'm also really enjoying what's happening with all the different textures. Texture is helping the bush to separate. Um, and I just like the way all these textures are playing off of each other um, in the image. When I start to think about a perfect world improvement, a perfect world of variation for this image, there are two things that I think about. One of them has to do with the sky, and the other has to do with the main subject or character in the story. I'd like to make this come forward a little bit more, so I'm going to look at several ways to, to potentially do that. And the other thing that I think about here is the sky. Um, you know, the thing about sky is that it just has so much visual weight, and um, so much of the time the, the sky really has the potential to be busy and to become overwhelming. You know, we start off with the fact that the top part of the image has a lot more visual weight than the bottom because this is where we're trained to go, the top of the page, no matter where you are in the world, we're trained to go to the top of the page first, whether we move left or right once we get there. Top of the page is very visually heavy because of gravity. It's easier to go from the top to the bottom things that are on the top push down on everything else and they have literally a lot of visual weight because of gravity. And then if that thing at the top happens to be sky, sky is a very powerful archetype and so much of the time the sky represents a lot of contrast. So much of the time you have a hard break from land to sky or sea to sky. All of these things end up making this very, very visually powerful in the image 
and so it's easy for it to overwhelm and in this case when you add the fact that you've got low clouds that are in the shade and clouds behind that that are more directly backlit the contrast up here starts to become overwhelming and this is the part of the image for me that doesn't quite go with the graphic quality of what I'm seeing down here and I don't really want to crop because I like what's happening in the sky and so this is an image where one of the first things I would do is motion blur the sky. Motion blurring a sky in a traditional landscape where you've got the difference between sky that you want to blur and maybe a very sharp mountain range a lot of times can be hard to pull off because of the way motion blur and blurring in Photoshop in general uh, works. But in this case because of the selective focus um, it, this is going to be easy to pull off. And the other reason why I would think about doing a dramatic blur on the sky is the image already has an otherworldly feel to it. So it's an image that I would be uh, feeling pretty good about sort of pushing in a direction that's not documentary or editorial. So I did a big motion blur on the sky, or actually on the whole image, and applied it locally with this mask. And then I came in and did something that I do quite a bit when I'm playing around with maybe compositing skies or blending skies. I duplicated this layer, and then I changed the blending mode to overlay and then I changed the opacity to about 50% and I did that because I wanted to get more contrast into the sky up here. There's a lot of contrast down in here, particularly in this bottom part and uh, I'd like to play this off of this, sort of the way John was already doing. And so that's that change to give a little more pop to the sky. I came in and did a hue saturation and mainly applied it to the bush as a subject matter, which is, and you can see that on the mask, there's the mask. Uh, one of the ways that I'm going to bring the bush forward, I came in and I, I made a, more of a container for the eye on the top part of the image, just painting on a blank layer with black and soft light blending mode. And then I came in and did a levels adjustment to pop the seed heads of this bush out. Um, and I, I want to show you my mask here, just painting with zero hardness on the brush. Um, to me, just this one technique, you know, in terms of of uh, making adjustments and applying them locally, just zero hardness on the brush and building up your changes slowly, starting with an opacity of the brush of somewhere around 10%. There's so much that you can do in Photoshop. There's so many people out there that are in the business of having to teach you tip after tip after tip after tip in Photoshop uh, because that's what they're offering. And um, it's sort of like all these new versions. There's some cool things that come along, but we all sort of get the sense that we're being given more tools than we need so that we'll have to buy the latest fastest computer and so much of it is overkill it sort of what's got us into the mess that we're in now too much all the time and just a few simple techniques in Photoshop that go back many 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 versions if you just want to uh, edit the way we used to edit in the darkroom which is just managing color and managing value just the idea of adjustment layers and working with low opacities, building the, the, the changes to the mask up slowly and zero hardness on the brush can go so far in Photoshop. Um, the next thing that I did was I just darkened around the bush to try and make the bushes a main character in the story come forward and if you sit back from your monitor a little bit hopefully you can see it taking on a little bit more dimension and form and then I lowered the contrast at the bottom on the rocks just a little bit. Here's where we started and here is where we ended up. Just a different variation of a very beautiful image that John has submitted. I just love this way of seeing the landscape and it's uh, something to practice and try with your telephoto lenses. I want to say a big thank you to John for sharing this beautiful landscape image. Thank you to you for being here on the Mindful Eyes Daily Critique.